One of the biggest problems with harem anime, aside from the blatant objectification of women that's endemic to the genre, is the fact that some of the protagonists are eye-rollingly boring. No, really, they are some of the worst anime protagonists out there and they make for some of the worst anime boyfriends. This doesn't exactly make for great storytelling. While some viewers are happy to use protagonists as wish fulfillment, others want, you know, actual character development or, at minimum, non-horrible anime relationships to project onto. Sadly, many of these anime heroes are so mind-numbingly dull, they shouldn't have harems at all. At number 10, we have Kirigaya Kazuto from Sword Art Online. While Sword Art Online doesn't fall neatly into the harem genre, it does meet the requirement of featuring multiple women vying for the affections of one very dull young man. Girls who like Kirito will do anything for him, including offering him unlimited free blacksmithing services. Kirito rarely expresses an opinion on anything. Flat effect and low emotional intelligence can make for a compelling character, but it has to be done right. With his hot topic discount rack aesthetic and his failure to add any humor or pathos to the series, Kirito is just unforgivably boring. At number 9, we have Keiichi Morisato from Oh My Goddess. After an ordinary college student with no personality named Keiichi calls the goddess relief office by accident, he is offered a wish. He wishes that Belle Dandy, a literal goddess from actual heaven, would stay by his side forever. While that might seem terrifying, forever for a human is like 5 minutes for a goddess. So it isn't that bad. You'd think that Belle Dandy and the other goddesses fawning over the dude would have better things to do than participate in Keiichi's college's beauty pageant. Apparently though, all these heavenly deities want is for Keiichi to bury his boring face in their poison cleavage. At number 8, we have Tsukune Ayono from Rosario Plus Vampire. Tsukune is an ordinary boy who enrolls in a school for monsters and demons called Yokai Academy. No human school would accept him, you see, due to poor grades. Apparently, the demon school has very low academic standards. Once there, Tsukune meets multiple monster girls who fall in love with him, despite his inability to do pretty much anything. He's a human in a school full of powerful monsters, and he isn't particularly strong or intelligent as far as humans go. Eventually, Tsukune becomes a vampire, which drastically increases his physical strength. Unfortunately, he doesn't really use said strength for much of anything. The manga uses the transformation as an opportunity for character development and cool action sequences, but the anime's focus is on pointless harem based comedy, so a chance for potentially awesome character development is wasted. At number 7, we have Yuichi Karasuma from Samurai Harem. With a title like Samurai Harem, you can probably guess that the main character isn't exactly a gem. Yuichi Karasuma is a martial artist studying at the Ikaruga family dojo. Three out of the four Ikaruga sisters have some romantic or sexual interest in Yuichi. The only one who doesn't is a 10 year old girl. You could give them credit for that. If not for the fact that the show makes a big thing out of her huge 10 year old boobies. So yeah, you know what? No credit on that count. Yoichi's main attribute seems to be getting nosebleeds when he sees or does something vaguely related to sex. As most fans know, nosebleeds are a stand-in for boners in anime. Yuichi's main character trait, therefore, is boners. At number 6, we have Rito Yuki from To Love Ru. Like the majority of aggressively dull harem protagonists, Rito is a well meaning and good natured boy who constantly grabs girls' private parts by accident or in his sleep. The series takes a horrible trope so far that he sees a doctor about it. Said doctor describes it as cataplectic indecency syndrome. The eagle eyed among you have probably noticed that's not a real thing. 
It's an excuse for a teenage boy to molest hot girls for the enjoyment of the worst kind of anime fan. At number 5, we have Ataru Muraboshi from Urusei Yatsura. Rather than actually having his own harem, Ataru just desperately wants one. The only thing Ataru has resembling a relationship is with the alien princess Lum, who is so madly in love with him that she electrocutes him whenever he looks at other girls. Despite this, Ataru keeps trying to collect harem members, joyfully hitting on anyone with a vagina and a pulse. It's a miracle he doesn't die by the end of the series, and it's an enduring mystery why Lum loves him so much. The fact that he doesn't get the harem he's striving for, however, isn't mysterious at all. At number 4, we have Yuto Amakawa from Omamori Himari. Yuto Amakawa is an orphan whose parents left him a magical relic prior to their deaths. His childhood friend has been taking care of him ever since he was orphaned. As it turns out, the relic is a link to his genetic destiny as a demon slayer. He ends up surrounded by large-breasted, big-eyed demon girls who are all madly in love with him. So, what unique personal attributes does Yuto have to inspire such ardor? 1. He's allergic to cats. It makes his cohabitation with a cat demon mildly problematic. That's it. One of the only trait that makes you any different from any other person on the planet can be tamped down with a couple of Clearden. You know you're doing something wrong. <laughs> At number 3 we have Keitaro Orishima from Love Hina. After failing his college entrance exams, Keitaro Yoshima becomes the manager of his grandmother's woman-only apartment complex. There, he meets a group of women and proceeds to be the least professional building manager in history. They all have some degree of crush on him, and he regularly trips and lands face first in their cleavage. He ultimately marries the one whose sundry escapades border on domestic abuse, Naru Narusagawa. Keitaro marries her because his only character trait is his desire to track down his childhood bestie. Who happens to be Naru. The fact that she constantly punches him in the face is apparently just whatever. At number 2 we have Riku Ayoba from Tokimeki Memorial Only Love. Riku is a teenage boy trying to adjust to life at a new school. Over the course of the story, he acquires several love interests but doesn't develop a particularly meaningful relationship with any of them. After a series of nonsense adventures that involve him getting chased around school wearing cat ears, he finally ends up making a choice. The girl he picks up is Sayuri, who is just as bland as he is, if not more so. Also, they don't swear on dying love for one another or kiss or even hold hands. The series ends with Riku learning Sayuri's email address. Emotionally resonant? It ain't. At number one, we have Makoto Ito from School Days. Considering the fact that School Days ends with Makoto's harem straight up murdering him, you'd think there'd be something about him to make him worthy of that kind of passion. There is not. Makoto's main personality trait is his propensity for cheating on women. The dude makes out with a girl in front of another girl, and he has sex with multiple girls concurrently despite their clear indication they did not sign on for polyamory. While this does make Makoto slightly… unique in terms of harem protagonists, there's not much to him besides general douchebaggery. Weirdly, the viewer is expected to feel sorry for him when he gets killed. Empathy does have a limit, school days. Well, that's it for the list. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, check out my other videos. Bye!